fat with it, with a high glycemic index food, you would um, basically slow down that rate of release. And a lot of the, the, the sample menus that I have on today's show um, basically have, you know, fat in the diet. And I don't want people to run scared of fat. And I'm going to get into that later. So the diet presented here promotes low glycemic carbohydrates predominantly. Okay, and we're going to get into that. Uh, two types of fat in the gut. There's the visceral fat and the subcutaneous fat. The visceral fat is the fat buried within your abdominal beneath the subcutaneous fat, which is usually the fat right under your skin. People, they can see it. It's, perce it's perceivable. You can see it. It's, it hangs over your belt buckle if you're really fat. Um, so visceral fat, although it cannot be seen, many people believe that the more you weigh, the more visceral fat you're likely to have. And that obviously is excluding a bodybuilder. Um, the other thing is, the, Dr. Oz talks a lot about the omentum, and I believe, now don't quote me on this, I believe the omentum is in the visceral fat, a part of the visceral fat. And the V for, for visceral, um, some people believe it, it, uh, it stands for vicious, okay? Because the visceral fat produces chemicals, we're going to get a little bit detailed here, such as uh, TNF, which is tumor necrosis factor, and I'll get into these in a second, and interleukin-6. Basically, those are chemicals with fancy names, but all I'm saying is they raise levels of chronic inflammation in your body, causing those negative consequences we talked about, the high blood pressure, diabetes, pre-diabetes. Some people believe, you know, they call it the, the, the metabolic syndrome. Heart disease, stroke, uh, pre-diabetes, stroke and obesity. So there is a connection there. Okay? Again, the theme here is inflammation and obesity. Is that the only thing? No. But it's what I'm talking about today. Here's another one. Cortisol. Remember that Cortislim? I don't know whether I, I don't know if they're still selling that. Um, but cortisol is, is, a, is a player here in this, in this uh, belly fat. Cortisol is a stress hormone that is uh, released when blood sugar is low. Um, I'm going to get into stress in a second. But let's just talk about when, when blood sugar is low. Let's say you do a, a, a real exhaustive workout and, um, you know, especially people that are endurance athletes, they can deplete a lot of their glycogen or their stored sugars, which is in the muscles and in the liver. You get low on sugar, basically. So when the body senses lowness, uh, a low in sugar, the body will produce cortisol. And cortisol is basically kind of takes protein and it brings it to the liver and it does this fancy thing called gluconeogenesis. It makes sugar. So basically, you, you, the protein, that if you have a protein shake after your workout, it may not be as effective as if you have some simple sugars in there as well. So you blunt or blo block the amount of cortisol that's released because you have in the, you have in, you're, you're replenishing your sugars now. So if you have, um, after your workout, it's okay to have those simple sugars, you know, like even uh, like a banana putting in there in your protein shake, okay, to discourage... Um, a catabolic hormone, cortisol, which breaks down, and a uh, host of negative consequences. And also, um, stress, physical or mental, can release cortisol, and a lot of uh, research says it can contribute to belly fat as well. So this may sound a little corny, but if you can meditate, relax for at least a half an hour a day. One book that might be simple to read is The Relaxation Response by Herbert Benson, um, many other books on meditation, but just to just sit. We're in a fast-paced society. Just relax. I know people have families. Um, you know, it's very tough, but if you can find a half hour a day, that would really be helpful um, to, to, to really, really, you know, lower the cortisol levels in the blood. Another one, last one, last term, essential fatty acids. What's the word essential mean? It means that the body, it's essential because the body does not produce it, so we need to get it from 
our diet. They're very important. We call them EFAs for short. So a lot, this diet contains the, the, the good fats. You know, there's good fats and bad fats. We'll talk about them later when we talk about the different macronutrients, which are carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. I'll go over some um, guidelines. So you have, even though I'm going to give you a diet plan uh, or a sample diet, um, it's important to know, you know, how to pick, you know, certain, certain foods from certain food groups. Okay, so those are the terms. And so a summary of um, the diet, but before I go into any more detail about this diet, I recommend that, and I think I, I put it in the beginning of the show as well, but I also want to reiterate that uh, before you change any of your dietary habits, it's important that you talk to your physician, your primary care physician, or even better, if you have a registered dietitian, okay? I'm going to be talking about that again, I think, in another section up here, if I remember all my stuff I want to talk about today. So basically a summary of the diet. It discourages inflammation, which in turn can lower CRPs. It's probably good to actually, before you go on diet, get your CRP levels checked and then see what they are after. Would be a good idea. It consists of mainly low glycemic carbohydrates. We talked about that. That don't spike your insulin. In turn, encourages fat loss. It will decrease visceral fat consists primarily of whole grains, not refined carbohydrates, we'll talk about those, which changes the glucose and insulin response and makes it easier, basically, to mobilize fat stores. It consists of healthy